Hello and welcome to Squaring the Circle, a podcast created by Tisby, your partner in developing superior software solutions for your business. I'm your host, Lily, and I'm so excited to hit the ground running today with our very first episode. With over 25 years of software development experience, Tisby is finally offering industry insights that will give our partners a leg up against competitors and position them as technological revolutionaries within their respective fields. Today, we're covering a topic that might hit at home for some of you, a subject the Tisby team regards very seriously, as it is an unfortunately common issue many businesses have faced. This preventable issue comes with enormous costs, wasted resources, and stalled development. It is something that may have happened to your business in the past, and that might be affecting your business currently. It may even cause problems for your business in the future a software hostage situation. What exactly is a software hostage situation? How do you recognize if your business is currently a victim of such a thing? How do you break free from one if you find yourself held hostage? And how do you avoid falling for this trap in the future? Stay tuned and you'll find out shortly. For now, let's start with introductions. Today, we are welcoming our guest who has been with Tisby since the very beginning. I'm excited to welcome Tisby COO, Sasha Berger. Hi, Sasha. Hi, Lily. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. How are you doing? Awesome. I'm doing great. I'm excited to get going with this. So tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're so passionate about what you do. Well, since uh, we started this business together with Jim Turner and Dmitry Ivanov since 1998. Our mission was to help businesses in North Carolina and later in other states to just get better about the technology. That's one thing which brings me to excitement, which drives my blood, is technology helping the companies to get better, to create competitive ideas, to move forward with their own ideas using technology. And what, to, to my regret, oftentimes when we see the company and we are invited to look at their state of technology, we feel a little bit disappointed internally because it's like they are not reaching their maximums. They are not reaching their capacities with a few exceptions, right? It could have been better. And that's what our mission in life, to help them to get better. I love that. That's that's awesome. So today we're here to talk about software project hostage situations. So let's talk a little bit about that. Tisby coined the term project hostage situation to describe a challenge that many businesses face when they get themselves wrapped up with the wrong software developer. Sasha, I brought you on the podcast today because you are incredibly experienced in the area of project rescue. I touched on project hostage situations during the intro, but I did not get into the thick of what that situation might look like for a business. I thought you would be the perfect person to ask. So tell us, what does it mean for a business to be in a project hostage situation? Is someone being held for ransom? Indeed, I um, uh, I have experience in this area, and this is rather unfortunate than fortunate, right? I don't like to see the company being held, quote unquote, hostage by IT. Uh, when we say IT hostage, it's usually not a life threatening situation for anybody who is taken hostage, but we kind of use it figuratively. However, the results are pretty bad. The company is kind of uh, stuck. The leadership of the company kind of prevents the progress. I have seen through my experience 30 years plus various variants of hostage. But usually the common denominator here is that the leadership and the company is stuck. They cannot get what they want. The project is not moving forward or moving forward too slowly. It results in a lot of no answers. Like, can we do X, Y, Z? The answer is no, not now, not in this month, not, not by the end of this year, no. And the company has to disappoint their clients internal or external, and everybody is getting disappointed. Money is lost. Competitors are winning over the market share. The results can be brutal. The company can go out of business. What is really the hostage taking? It's when, say, the programmer, the lead programmer, or the organization which provides programming or other IT services kind of takes control over the fate of the company's software. That's not what it should be, in my opinion. In our opinion, we always say, IT is a service. The best IT is the one which you don't hear about, the one which you don't know about. It's just quietly gets things done. And 
if it becomes an obstacle which kind of cont controlling entity it sometimes results in the bad position lily let me know if i explained it well yeah i think you did a great job with explaining it um so now i'm wondering if you could provide some examples of what real life project hostage situations may look like for a business for obvious reasons i will not list the customers or the personalities involved but we have seen for example the situation where it was a company rather a small business which is focused on their it product development that's very it centric and it's a small company pretty much um, just 20 people or less there is an individual who was serving as a programmer the lead programmer as the main programmer of the project and he created a very complicated system with a very complicated database which was not robust enough and he just didn't have enough skills to scale it and the business was scaling greatly the business was increasing their volume so on the business side it was a very happy situation sales were going fine and the transaction flow was increasing steadily but the database became a bottleneck steadily so the more transactions were processed through the system the more frequently we had outages, database was crashing, was slowing down. You would see this hanging screens. He would be telling the management that he's working on it. The database needs an upgrade. We need a more powerful server. Month after month, year after year, he was not able to resolve the stream of troubles. The business got very frustrated. That would be the typical scenario, right? The, the person, he was not quite willing to share the controls because of job security it was a high paying job for him right but he outgrew his own capabilities and he was kind of taking the hostage the whole company he was a very important person because without him the database could have easily crashed right and the management understood this letting mm -hmm. him go was not an easy option too right like without him the whole business could have been on standstill in a moment he also was not able to provide the way forward that's a great example. Um, so let's say if someone was watching this podcast and they realize that they're in this situation, what would you advise them to do? Are there any specific action steps a business needs to take to get out of this situation unscathed? Just find a good technology provider who you trust. It may be the new technology provider, new programmer, new individual, or it may be somebody else who is recommended. A good provider would be sitting down with the business owner analyzing the risks but you have to recognize and confirm that you are mr business owner yes you are indeed in the hostage situation because always the easiest way forward would be with existing provider changing the information delivery provider is always a painful risk risky step now if it needs to be done it has to be done properly with a good planning with a good execution i think it starts with the relationship you have to sit down with the, with your new technology provider and together derive the plan. We wouldn't want our viewers to fall back into a similarly poorly matched partnership. Are there certain characteristics that they should look out for for a better match? Important thing is to see if the IT provider has a good and steady team, the team which was not just hired for this project. And mm. the programmers have to be senior and they have to demonstrate their technical levels or the provider has to demonstrate somehow that the technology is taken good care of and the fundamental knowledge because it's a knowledge job and knowledge operation it's like a doctor you know like you, there are many doctors but not everybody is very experienced doctor so when you go for the surgery you better make sure you check the references you check the credentials and possibly if you have a chance to talk to other patients right how can you as a business owner identify when you are working with a software developer who is in over their head? You can probably trace it through several things. Uh, one of my favorites is like this project is 90% done. But where was it like a year ago? Oh, it was also 90% done. The project is just not getting finished. That's a first red flag. That's a sign of trouble. Why cannot the project be finished on time? There might be some legitimate reasons, but you have to now listen to this answer to this question from the programmer, why, why it's not done. Sometimes you just have to be considerate and you have to understand as a business owner that sometimes a programmer is just not willing or not capable of admitting that 
this assignment is over his skill. For the people who haven't been in a project hostage situation but are interested in having software made for their business, what steps would you recommend they take to pick the right software developer the first time? I guess there are a couple of things to watch for when you choose your technology provider. So number one is make sure they do get good references. It's probably one most important thing I would recommend to search for. When you talk about hostage, situation and you need to get out of the hostage situation maybe it's worth asking your provider if they've done this before for other customers and can these customers give the testimonial or give a reference to this operation well and on that note i think we have properly established the dangers of a software hostage situation and what to do if you recognize the signs in your own business project still have questions reach out to our tisby experts yourself Find our phone number in the description. And Sasha, thank you for joining us today on Squaring the Circle. We are looking forward to having you back for another episode in the future. And for everyone watching, thanks for sticking around. Follow Tisby on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter to receive updates on what's next for Squaring the Circle.